We've just seen a couple of examples of inquiry-based labs, and they looked fairly different. They targeted different student populations, were different in scope, required different levels of resources. What then defines an inquiry-based approach to lab instruction? Well, in 2000, the National Research Council published Inquiry in the National Science Education Standards, a guide for teaching and learning. And in that, they indicated that in inquiry-based processes, students engage in many of the same activities and thinking processes as scientists. What then are these activities and thinking processes? What is it that scientists do? Well, multiple policy documents published over decades, including those from the National Research Council and the American Association for the Advancement of Science, science, science <laughs> um, indicate that scientists ask questions, they propose hypotheses and models, they design, carry out, and analyze studies to evaluate those hypotheses and models, they communicate the results and interpretations, and then they revise the results and interpretation in response to peer review. To help teachers think about how to incorporate these thinking processes and activities into um, an inquiry-based approach to lab, Gabriella Weaver, Keenan Russell, and Donald Wink proposed seven elements of inquiry. These elements of inquiry are observing and questioning, designing experiments, collecting data, analyzing data, repeating, and reporting and responding to peer review. So these are the elements of inquiry that we want to think about when we're considering an inquiry-based approach to lab instruction. Let's think about how these can be incorporated. First, let's think a little bit about a traditional approach to lab instruction. In a traditional approach to lab instruction, students are doing some of the activities and thinking processes that we associate with what scientists do. But usually the focus is on collecting data and analyzing data. In inquiry-based labs, uh, more of these elements of inquiry tend to be incorporated, but they do work on a continuum, and query-based labs um, do exist on a continuum. At sort of its simplest level, an inquiry-based approach to lab instruction adds the element of designing experiments. That is, students have responsibility for designing the experiments in addition to collecting data and analyzing data. They have to choose um, what what elements to keep constant, what elements to vary, what controls to do, put together the experiment that they're going to do in that lab. They may do this in response to an instructor-based question, but now they're incorporating this element of inquiry, um, this, this thinking process and this activity that scientists do. In other examples of inquiry-based labs, even more of the thinking processes and activities that scientists do are turned over to students. In some inquiry-based labs, the responsibility for asking an answerable research question is turned over to students. Um, they make observations, they ask questions with guidance from their instructor, design an experiment to answer that question, then collect their data and analyze their data. In still other inquiry-based labs, even more of these um, thinking processes and activities of scientists are turned over to the students so that they may also repeat experiments and report the results to their peers. So if Inquiry-based labs can exist along this continuum, ranging from you know, just incorporating the experimental design, collecting data, and analyzing data, all the way to incorporating all of these elements of inquiry. Let's take a minute and think about which of these elements of inquiry we saw in the two examples that we looked at earlier. The astronomy lab example, led by Erica Grunstrom, and the biological sciences lab example, led by Charles Sissom. First, let's think about that astronomy lab example. Which of these elements of inquiry were incorporated into that astronomy lab example? 
This is a choose all you apply, choose all that apply question. So before you go on with the video, you'll need to choose which of these elements you think were incorporated into that example. The astronomy lab example incorporated most of these elements, but in limited and structured ways. So Erica Grinstrom structured her astronomy lab such that students had the opportunity to practice all to practice essentially all of these elements, to practice observing, questioning, designing experiments, collecting and analyzing data. Um, and she gradu gradually withdrew the support um, for the students such that by the end of the semester they could do all of these elements on their own. If you'll recall, what students did um, was on most weeks, they would come in and they would become acquainted with a website um, to see what kinds of data it it what, what kinds of data it made available to them, um, and the kinds of questions that could be answered with that data. Um, they would then um, practice the analysis element, evaluating evaluating statements to determine if they were supported by the evidence that could be. Um, gathered from that website. And then they would practice asking questions. They would ask a question, check it with Erica Grinstrom to make sure that it was answerable, and then they would go on and gather data, analyze it to answer that question. And so they had this very structured um, support for incorporating these elements. And it culminated the last uh, lab of the semester with them coming in choosing a website that they'd used earlier in the semester, um, asking a, a question that could be answered with data from that website, checking it with Erica, and then doing a small project that culminated in a report to their peers. Now, let's think about which of these elements were incorporated into the Biological Sciences Lab example. Again, this is a choose all that apply question. You need to determine which of these elements you think were incorporated um, into the Biological Sciences Lab example led by Charles Sissom before continuing the video. That biological sciences lab also incorporated all of these elements, again, with support and in the biological sciences example with iteration. So the students started the semester by making observations um, by reading papers that Charles Sissom had selected for, for them and using the observations um, that they made from those papers to identify sort of an open research question in that particular area. And Charles would help guide them to think about whether their question was feasible, whether it was answerable. And he also helped them um, as a group of these eight students designed experiments to answer that question. The students would go on and gather data, analyze data um, to try to answer their question, and at mid-semester they presented their results to their peers and the other instructors in the class so that they could get feedback, respond to it, adjust their project before going on to repeat and expand on their experiment um, to reach their final results. And as you'll remember, they reported their final results um, to publicly um, to their peers, to the instructional staff in the course, and to all of the faculty in the biological sciences department. So that lab incorporated all of those elements, but it very consciously supported um, those different elements. Mm -hmm.